On this episode of Heartbeats, Stella gets a chance to turn the corner on the facial tumor that's plagued her for almost 10 years. It's technically challenging surgery, and it's surgery that can make a difference in someone's life. And Bridget's news. She's just had a mastectomy and now returns to hospital for the pathology results. Life shouldn't be this hard when you're only 30. It's the last thing I would wish on anybody. A half ago, Bridget Davlet honeymooned in Paris with her husband Rob. They looked forward to building a life together with hopes of starting a family. I'm taking vitamins. I'm also taking painkillers. And I'm taking Celexa, which is an antidepressant. But six months ago, everything turned horribly wrong. At the gym one day, Bridget discovered a lump in her breast that appeared to grow almost overnight. She was quickly diagnosed with a rare cancer known as locally advanced breast cancer. It's news few women at 30 years of age ever have to face. There are good days and there are bad days. I think it's a struggle from day to day. I've been lucky to have someone like Rob, my husband, who's been my strength and my pillar of support through all of this. Bridget's undergone chemotherapy first, then surgery to remove her right breast. Today, she and Rob are at the cancer clinic to learn of the pathology results from her mastectomy. What we're here today to talk about is how you knew something was wrong with your breast. Well, I was in the shower and I found a lump about the size of a kiwi. And so I knew something was wrong <laughs> right away. It wasn't a small lump. It hadn't been there the day before. So Rob called some breast screening clinics um, around town and we were told that I was too young to come in for a, a breast screening mammogram or to be to be seen and we decided um, to come to Sunnybrook emergency because they had the breast center. Diagnosis was made you met with your surgeon and she talked to you about doing the treatment in a, a back to front way to what would be considered normal instead of doing the surgery first to do some chemotherapy first. And she said generally because my tumor was so large that they would have to try to shrink it um, before doing what looked like probably at that time a mastectomy. And we gave you chemotherapy, we gave you a lot of chemotherapy. You had a much harder time with chemotherapy than the group of women that you met uh, with our clinic. Even though I got just about every side effect known to man, there were times when I could be 30 years old and pretend like I didn't have cancer until my hair started falling out. And then, you know, once my hair started falling out, it really hit me that, oh my God, I really have cancer. Stella is a single mom and a personal fitness trainer plagued by a rare, though benign, bone tumor growth in her cheek called fibrous dysplasia. It's extended into my cheekbone and um, on the roof of my mouth, and it's growing, it has grown under my eye. So half of my eyes is like a bit shut up, a bit shut. Stella's had two prior surgeries to shave the bone growth, but it grew back both times threatening permanent disfigurement and pain. Now she's about to undergo extensive plastic surgery. First, the growth will be removed from her cheekbone, then a portion of bone from her hip will be used to rebuild her face. This is a rare disorder. In a clinic such as this, where we see craniofacial deformities from a variety of different causes, we probably wouldn't see more than half a dozen to a dozen patients with fibrous dysplasia, new diagnoses every year. When you wake up, the main thing for you to remember is you're going to have some stitches on the inside of your mouth, and you'll also have stitches on the inside of your eyelid. You won't really see those. You might see a couple coming out of the corner. You're really, really swollen. Okay. And you've got some numbness in your cheek now, but you'll be even number. Okay. 
This surgery is so extensive that Stella risks being left with lifelong vision impairment and facial numbness. Outcomes she has no choice but to risk. When we look at her CAT scan today, it shows this mass of abnormal bone that's cavitating and overgrowing all the way through the gums. A comparison of CAT scans only weeks apart shows that unanticipated rapid bone growth has dramatically pressured Stella's left eye. One of the major challenges is to remove this in such a way as uh, without causing any injury either to the muscles or nerves that um, provide function to the eye. That monitor will show us, as we use this probe, it'll show us exactly where we are in the face. Dr. Antonician needs to perform the near impossible to conduct the entire surgery through small incisions under the eyelid and in the gum line. There's no other way to access the skull bone safely through a tangle of nerves and with the hope of minimal scarring. The other thing we're keeping an eye out for is there's a nerve here that provides sensation to the cheek and the upper lip and the side of the nose. And we know that she already has compression of that nerve because she had numbness before we started. We'll see whether or not we can find that nerve and decompress it a little bit. Whether she'll get a return of sensation is impossible to say. That, I think, is the nerve right there. Dr. Antonician must now proceed more slowly. He's found a primary facial nerve, so any misstep now could cause Stella permanent facial paralysis. So we're going to change our tack. We've done everything we can safely do from one area. The tumor has been removed through the gum line, but the hardest part is yet to come. Dr. Antonician and his team have to now move up through the eye socket. It's here where the most damage could occur. But today we're talking about what the pathologist found. What we were hoping would happen was that there would be no cancer left at the time of the surgery. That's what you and I and Barbara and Sunil Verma have been dreaming of from day one. All of us have. When they did the operation, unfortunately, they did find some cancer there. They found some cancer within the breast itself and they found some cancer within a few of the lymph nodes within the armpit. And we know in the majority of women with breast cancer, estrogen is like a fertilizer on the cancer cell. It makes the cancer cell grow. I definitely noticed that the, the tumor started shrinking um, relatively quickly after I stopped my periods. And that's why I think we should start some treatment with a injection under the skin once a month. Um, and that's a a hormone to stop you producing estrogen. So we are going to make you menopausal. Breast cancer is a very unusual disease in young women. The average age of diagnosis is 62. Her type of breast cancer is also a very unusual disease for a woman with breast cancer at any age. Now I just want to switch the conversation to a young man in your life how have you been coping with watching somebody you love dearly suffer? Uh, well, it's not easy. Um, it's the last thing I would wish on anybody. Bridget's life is now focused on one thing, keeping the cancer at bay. In one week, she'll start the hormone shots aimed at shutting down the estrogen believed to be driving her cancer. And even my husband, God bless him, they want to be there for you, but they're not going through it. They don't know what it's like to wake up some days and think, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm 30 years old and I'm going to die. Bridget has a rare form of breast cancer. It's already cost her her right breast, and she's only 30. Today, she'll embark on a new phase of treatment, hormone therapy aimed at stopping the production of estrogen from her ovaries. And the cost of that is very high. I have to admit that I'm more nervous about this stage than I have been with any of the others so far, and even with the radiation coming up. And shutting down your ovaries, um, temporarily even, you never know if um, your period's gonna come back. You never know if you're gonna be able to have kids. So. And 
obviously that's a concern that my husband and I have after being married for, you know, just a year and a half. And, you know, we had talked about having kids. They, got, they wanted to talk to you about the tamoxifen before the game, too. Okay. So they're expecting... The most common side effects that, you know, monitor and manage would be the hot flashes. Right. And mood swings or depression, and we'll, we'll gauge that again, it's rare. And then changes in sex drive, and we'll see how that goes and whether it's really impacting on your relationship. Or right. At home, okay. So really pretty much just the typical symptoms of menopause. It, it is, Only, you know, and just I... early. It is. You're continuing with the support group, do you think? Yeah, definitely. Because okay. sometimes I think it's easy when you're so young to feel really isolated and... Are you the youngest in the group? Are you? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just hard because you feel really alone. People always say that they cope with things on a day-by-day -day basis. Some days, it's not even day-by-day, -day, it's hour-by-hour hour or minute-by-minute. Minute. It's just getting so hard. You're almost, you're almost done the active treatment piece, but it's, it's, it's just getting easy. It's just been so long, <laughs> you know? One day you're just... You know, one day I'm just walking down the street and I have my life and I'm 30 and I'm my biggest worry is like, you know, where am I, which pub am I going to go to after work tonight, you know, and who am I going to call to go out with and, you know, just like that, you know, everything changes. So it's just Stella's surgery to remove a facial tumor moves now to a delicate stage. Abnormal bone extends from her teeth to her left eye, causing tremendous pressure. But her surgeon suspects there's additional tissue growth near the eye causing all the problems, and getting at it requires careful navigation. We, we saw her before surgery, we know that her eye was really bulging out. So we want to do everything possible to decompress the orbit, take the pressure off the eyeball. There's no question it has a consistency of cartilage here. It's soft and malleable, and on a CAT scan we know that it doesn't have the density of bone. Well, most of the surgery that I do focuses on reconstruction of the face or skull after deformities that might be caused by uh, trauma or uh, removal of certain types of tumors or cancers uh, or congenital deformities. So that's um, the growth that uh, I think has caused all of the very recent increase in projection of her eye and that fullness that she felt, but it's not the bony tumor proper. Okay, so we're going to start taking the bone out now. In removing this bone, we want to get as much of the tumor as we possibly can, but we want to leave enough bone around her teeth so we don't injure that bone. A pair of uh, forceps again. So if you look at her now, most of that tumor has been taken out, and now she's got a uh, very flat cheek, too flat. I think facial width-wise, she's okay, so we need to reconstruct that. The first phase of the surgery is over. Now begins the task of building a new cheekbone. Barb Fitzgerald, Bridget's nurse at the locally advanced breast cancer clinic, gives a final summary of the hormone Bridget's about to receive. What I'm gonna do is just slowly inject into the area that's, that's hopefully got some numbing. The worst of this is gonna be my cold hand. Okay. <laughs> I'll just draw the needle back a little bit, deposit, the, the depot and then take the needle out and that's it, okay. we're done. And then that will slowly res dissolve over the, the 28 days and then we'll do the same thing again. Okay. Okay. Hormone therapy is in essence supposed to starve my cancer from the estrogen. But in doing that, it also starves my body of estrogen and I may never be able to have kids. There's just a little opening there. Okay, you see? Yeah. I'm going to put the band-aid there, if you could leave it on for the next okay. 24 hours. Spot. <laughs> Bridget's estrogen is expected to stop for at least one year. Now, another phase of treatment, this time radiation, is soon to begin. Stella's surgery is nearly complete. Dr. Antonician begins to shape a new cheekbone from Stella's hip. So, we've taken a bone from her hip. 
we've divided it up into pieces. What we're going to try and do next is to have this in a position where we can uh, fix the bone graft in, in the right location. And we want to maintain its position by putting a little place of screws in. So we need to protect the eye contents. We'll slide this up just like there, please. Hey, can I have a drill, please? So we're playing with this uh, device now to get an idea of exactly what position we want before we fix it there. The one thing that's just a little worrisome is that that bone's abnormal bone, obviously. Whereas her bone graft that came from the hip is very solid. The bone that she has remaining in her face here is not. A lot of fiddling with this one piece because we want to get it as close to perfect as we possibly can. The rest of the reconstruction Snap. depends on it. So these little plates and screws are like a mechano set. They make a lot of these procedures possible because uh, during all this trouble of positioning these bony fragments, we want to make absolutely sure that where we position them, that they stay there until they're healed, until they're fused with bone. Four again, please. We know she's going to have some double vision temporarily. We expect that, but we want to make sure that there's a smooth gliding surface for the muscle at the end of all this. That's good. Perfect. Uh, this is a part that's a little gross, but we need to see, make sure that the muscle works properly. So what I'm going to do is try and grab the muscle and make sure that that muscle moves freely. It's not catching in anything, and it does, so I know that she can't have double vision permanently. And if we come out, we're very happy that the base of the nose is symmetrical now, where it was really bloated before, that the cheek is symmetrical, and that the whole rim of the orbit is down at a normal level to let the eye fall to where it's supposed to be. So basically, we're finished. Stella's in recovery from a complex facial reconstruction. Her surgeon will check on her pain and be on the lookout for any lasting double vision or nerve damage. Hi, Stella. Hi. How are you? Mm -hmm. Boy, I had a lot of medication. You had a lot of pain? Mm -hmm. You had a lot of pain? Mm -hmm. No, not too bad. I just want to watch you have you move your eye, okay? Just look right at my pen there. I get you to look up. Look way down. Open your eyes up. Open your eyes as much as you can. Are you seeing double there when you look at my pen? No. Yes. There's an immediate satisfaction in seeing the result. Other than different, uh, different disciplines in medicine, you may have to wait for quite a long time to see the result of any intervention. Whereas in plastic surgery, especially with facial reconstructive surgery, um, I know whether I've done a good job or not at the end of the day. It looks really, really good. You're a little more swollen than average, but you're moving your mouth and moving your eye a lot better than average, which is a good thing. I'm glad it's over with and waiting for it to heal them. Bridget is about to begin her radiation for locally advanced breast cancer. By her side is a fellow cancer survivor and friend, Karen. The closer I get to the end of everyday treatment, the more excited I get. Um, actually finishing having to come to the hospital day in, day out, day in, day out. It'll be five weeks, 25 sessions, five days a week, Monday to Friday. So basically what is what we're going to be doing today is just mapping out the area that Dr. Pio wants to treat. This planning session will involve tattooing marks on Bridget's chest that will be used to precisely mark the zone of radiation. How many tattoos are there? You're going to get six of them. Six? Yeah. Okay. They're very tiny. You may not even see them yourself. They yeah. look like a little freckle. Okay. okay. Is this still okay in that position or is it starting to get a little bit? Yeah. All right, like that? Yeah. Okay. I just hope that it gets any sort of remaining cancer cells at the site. The chemo and the hormone therapy is supposed to do it sort of systemically, so if this works, then that's my greatest hope. It wasn't too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. Always wanted tattoos, didn't you? Back quite sore there? A little sore, yeah. Hopefully my treatments will relatively coincide with my second anniversary. One down. 25 more to go. Okay. It's been only two weeks since Stella's surgery, and already the difference is apparent. So, tell me how things are going. Well, the swelling have went down a lot, which is good. And yeah, I still feel numbness for like half of my nose here underneath the eye. I still feel a bit swollen in here. Yeah. The swelling is down substantially from last week. No sign of infections, no sign of 
problems with your vision, so double vision, none of those things that I'm concerned about. No. The numbness in your face is normal, and now I would expect the sensation gradually to come back. The swelling, normally I tell patients after facial surgery, takes about three months for 99% of that swelling to disappear. You know how you take the bone from my hip, right? Does that bone grow back? It doesn't grow back. Uh -huh. We take shaving from shavings of bone from the inside, so your hip will be just as strong. Oh. And let me just see you in about two months' time. Okay. 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 Three months later, and Stella's recovery is striking. Before the surgery, I just feel this heaviness on the left side of my cheek. Right now, it feels very light. It's like something has lift off of my face. For me to be where I am right now in three months, like wow, I'm laughing. I'm very happy about it. I cannot wait to just, you know, do stuff that I always wanted to do. Nothing is holding me back. Coming up, highlights from the next episode of Heartbeats. On the next episode of Heartbeats, frustration mounts as Bridget suffers delays on her radiation treatment while her life becomes consumed by the demands of fighting cancer. You don't really know what your life is like without coming here all the time. And a young woman takes the chance to regain hearing after years of loss. I think that when I get the cochlear implant, it will take me some time to adjust. This is something that I really want to do.